Hey YouTube, it's Hanna Loba. If you want more Moto America content, check out the new and vastly improved Moto America Live Plus app. It's the only place you can catch all the race action in one place all season long. Click the link in the description below. Now it's just time to get a good solid warm up lap, get those tires up to temperatures. We get a look here at starting grid. So Ty Scott, Blake Davis, and PJ Jacobson round out row number one. And a great start here today for Jake Lewis, Corey Alexander, and you saw Gerardo also, T. Hobbs, Tamburini Mesa, and then Anthony Skoltz and Kayla Yakov just outside of row four. Back a little further, Linares, who I haven't seen. Alfonso Linares doing a great job. Nassani, Collins, Knapp, uh, Max Van, and Hayden Bickneys. Then we have Soltis, LaRoche, uh, Shane Maggs. And then Silva, Bruno Silva, both the Silva brothers back there, and Sil Halter, Owen Williams, Enriquez, and Rigo with Rivera, Horny, and Omen. Row 11, Silva again, and Ivy, it's the era, so. 18 laps scheduled for this one. When those red lights go off, we're going racing. It's Super Sport race number one, the first of the season. And away we go, and it looks like the Vision Wheel M4X star Suzuki of Tyler Scott gets a good launch. And the number 70 bike is going to lead us into turn number one. And P.J. Jacobson also on that yellow Ducati off to a good start. He's on that Ray Hall Ducati moto with Expel. And let's keep in mind, P.J. Jacobson won Superbike races last year here in the Moto America Championship. So P.J. dropping back down, he fits that bike so absolutely perfect. And, uh, you know, that team, they've been working really hard since Daytona, as you heard Corey talk about at the beginning. But P.J. Jacobson is definitely one of the class championship favorites for the year. So number 15, if you're used to looking at the 99 of P.J., get used to the number 15. And then it looks like it's going to be the 22 of Blake Davis on that N2 Racing bobblehead moto Yamaha R6. So we got a bunch of different manufacturers up front, including Maximiliano Gerardo on the Suzuki GSX-R750 in the 161. He's in fourth place. That's amazing. I mean, just to see what he's doing. He was in the B group session at Daytona for practicing qualifying. And you look at what he's doing now as PJ drafts up to that Suzuki GSX-R750 and is able to put himself in a position to outbreak Ty Scott down into the turn 10 on the first lap. PJ Jacobson looking to lead his first lap of the year here at Road Atlanta. Down the hill we go to the final corner. And P.J. Jacobson leads us onto the front straightaway. And look at that Ducati spin up on the first lap. No Cannot say enough about Maxi Miliano Gerardo from Uruguay on the top pro racing GSX-R 750 in fourth place. Welcome to the show as he has got Corey Alexander, the number 23 on the Ray Hall Ducati Moto with Roller Die informing Pentagali V2 there. And it looks like it's going to be the 22 of Davis who makes a bid for the lead. And he's going to lead into 10A as he transitions back into 10B. So now a Yamaha takes over the top spot. Yeah, the hand of that bike looks really solid right now under him. And as far as the uh, speeds and things go, you saw he was able to draft those guys, Greg, on that last lap. PJ now in the draft of that R6. He's going to pull out of the draft and find himself down the inside of Davis. And we'll see what ends up happening here. Yep, PJ is going to make that pass. Ty Scott sitting back there watching along with Gerardo and Corey Alexander, who is also just sitting there in fifth place. Corey, as we know, so good on the edge of the tire. Coming from 1,000 to the Super Sport machine is definitely going to be a transition for him sure. because you really don't want to be doing that, do you? You want to try to get the bike through the corners as quick as you can, and you can do more on the edge of the tire with these bikes than you can with a Super Bike. PJ Jacobson continues the lead away. The number 15 on the Ray Hall Ducati Moto with Expel Ducati Pentagon v2 and just like that blake davis takes over the lead the number 22 on the n2 racing bobblehead yamaha r6 and keep in mind the vision wheel m4x star suzuki no, and i have to say the technical partners here at moto america and what they've done things look pretty good at this big road america road atlanta racetrack jay as they're all coming in right around 160 miles per hour here in the middleweight sport bike category oh. Blake has a problem. Blake must have just got kicked up out of the seat or something out of wide. that little chicane, and you could see where it put him on the track. So Blake had a little bit of a problem out of that turn two, three area. Not sure if our cameras will get that one, but uh, but you can see it just separated the field just a little bit. Greg, to your point, we got four different manufacturers in the top eight right now. Impressive. Yeah, just behind Corey and Gerardo is that number 11. He's getting closer, isn't he, Greg? You can see Matthew Skultz just in the back shot there. He's getting closer. No, we got Ty, Ty Scott. Scott has crashed, heading up to turn two into the 3-4 area. That's going to probably be on the front break, Greg, as you get to the top there. 
and he is crashed. Corner workers doing an amazing job. That is a high risk place for those corner workers to be. All the riders are gonna get through there just further back and here's that crash. We didn't get it from the beginning, but that's generally gonna be just a little bit too much front brake as you come up over the top of the crest of that hill. It looks and like his bike is on rails. Like it doesn't look like he's been too hard on the tires at all. All right, so our ninth lead change of this one according to my ticker and now PJ Jacobson goes into the spot. And there's lap traffic getting out of the way, so no dramas there for these lead three. Now with about five and a half laps to go, who's going to sort themselves out? And can Matthew Skultz make this a four-rider affair as the GSXR 750 goes back around the Yamaha oh, R6 on the back straightaway? Corey. Corey on the brakes. Alexander goes up into second spot. That was nice and tidy. No issue there for him. And now look at Skultz getting the drive as he gets the position back down into turn 10A, turn B. Down to the bottom of the hill they go. And P.J. protecting the inside line. Corey trying to get a drive. And yep. Davis continues to lead the way. And when he talked to Hannah on the grid, Jay, he said he didn't expect to be in the position he's in, but he's here. And Blake Davis knows how to win races. It may not be in super sport yet, but it certainly has been his career in Moto America. And I mentioned before, Yamaha has their eyes on this young man, and they are supporting this effort. And they want to keep him in the fold moving forward because they really like what Blake Davis has to offer. But a little wheel in the air. And there goes P.J. Jacobson back to the point. This is the best spot Matthew has been in behind our leaders. Gerardo has just dropped off the back a little bit. He was about a half a second slower than our lead group the last time. Still a tremendous effort for that white bike in fifth, in fifth place right now as Blake Davis, P.J. and Corey all come down into turn 10. Corey's going to have another look at P.J. Jacobson as they turn the bikes into turn 10. He's going to make that pass. P.J.'s a little wide. Skultz has nowhere to go. On the number 11, he's so going to go around P.J. Jacobson, make that one work. So now Matthew Skultz up into second place. And keep in mind, this is an incredible ride from Skultz. The last time he was full-time in super sport, this middleweight category was back in 14. Is now wow. Skultz goes for the lead, and he takes over. And that was in South Africa. And Skultz, who won a lot of races back in 2014 in this class, he gets the lead for a moment, but P.J. takes advantage of all the fighting, and he goes to the point with a lap and a half to go. As you can see them coming down the hill here, he was far enough back, gets that slingshot, Greg, and it's almost like somebody's whipping you past. PJ's gonna go late on the brakes. Both of them go oh, down that's to so turn 10. Deep. Is there room? And it's gonna be Blake Davis who's able to hold on to it and come out from underneath the bridge. But PJ Jacobson so close. Is he gonna make a run on him on the inside? He does. There goes the 15 down the hill. Can he get it turned? Onto this front straightaway they go. PJ sideways behind the bubble to the checkered flag they come, and it's gonna be PJ Jacobson with the win over Blake Davis, Matthew Skulls, Corey Alexander, and Gerardo. And the margin of victory is one tenth of a second for PJ Jacobson. A couple of seconds that lap, so I really helped Matt able to to really close that gap a lot quicker. But like he said, he was just using way too much tire to try to make his passes because he was making all of his passes, you know, on corner entry and corner exit where he's having to get these really good runs. And so PJ Jacobson gets a tenth of a second victory over Blake Davis on a last corner, last lap move. Matthew Skultz comes from, I don't know, Jay, what, eight seconds or something yeah, back? He was way far back. Way far back. I think he was in double digits at the start of the race.